Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about Streamlit Pandas, a new Python library I've written and designed that can be pip installed and function as a Streamlit component. What does Streamlit Pandas do? Well, it allows for you to easily take an input data frame from Pandas and automatically create a Streamlit application that looks like this with just a couple lines of Python code. It'll automatically generate all of the Streamlit widgets for you and handle the inputs from, the, uh, from a user with those widgets to manipulate the output data frame so that you can allow a user with just two lines of Python code to completely query your pandas data frame. And it automatically recognizes if the, the field that's being manipulated is a, is a string or if it is a, an integer or a floating point number, and it'll create relevant sliders or inputs from Streamlit automatically for you. And as we're gonna see, you can do some custom tweaking in it to allow for you to actually create multi-select or select widgets as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in and build this application in this video. Now, for this entire uh, video, we're gonna be using the Titanic data set, which I've talked about in this channel before when I covered pandas. Now, if you don't know anything about pandas, that's okay. All you really need for this video is a basic understanding that a pandas data frame is essentially, think of it as an Excel spreadsheet in Python that you can query, that you can organize and structure. I have a whole series on this channel on pandas, and I also have a whole textbook that you can use on pandas as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And the first thing we always wanna do is import streamlet as st. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna pull up our terminal here and run the command streamlet run, in our case, home.py. If you're familiar with streamlet, you'll know that this is kind of the basic step for generating the, the streamlet server that you can start working with as an application. Now at this stage, everything is actually blank, but our goal, like I said, is to generate an application that looks like this. Well, what all do we need? Well, let's take a look first at our actual data frame and load that up. To do that, we're gonna import pandas as pd, and we're also going to use the streamlit pandas component, which we can import with import streamlit underscore pandas as, P, uh, as sp. Now, if you don't have streamlit pandas installed, you can do so by running pip install streamlit dash pandas, and this will install everything on your computer for you. Now, now that we've got all of these imported correctly, let's go ahead and load up our data frame. Remember, if you're working with data in Streamlit that is going to remain kind of constant, in our case, the original data frame, then it's really good to cache that data so that Streamlit doesn't reload it every time. And we can do that with st.cache. And we're gonna pass in allow output mutation and set that equal to true. And this needs to be a function underneath this decorator so that we can load up the data one time with a single function. I always call this load data, and I'm not gonna have any arguments here. I know what the data that I'm loading up is. It's going to be located in, um, in our data subfolder. And so this will be pd.read csv data titanic, titanic, there we go, dot csv. And we're just gonna simply return that data frame. That's all you need to do to load up the data. And let's go ahead and just take a look at that data by calling our function load data and then writing it into Streamlit. If we hit rerun, we'll see that data frame. It helps if you spell cache correctly. There we go. We'll see that that data frame is actually loaded up pretty quickly. It's a fairly small data set of only, I think about a thousand people. And these are the individuals on the Titanic. It has information like if the individual survived, which is a zero or a one, uh, the P class or the passenger class, their name, their sex. This is a binary uh, data set, so everyone is either male or female. I don't think there's any unknown in the data set. And age, which is a floating point number, because infants are represented with floats or decimal points. And it's got a lot of other information kind of, kind of stored in here. Now, if I wanted to query this pandas data frame in Python, I would have to write out some Python commands to query it however I want to. But in an application like Streamlit, what you're trying to do is give the user the ability to do those same actions by using widgets that they can interact with that manipulate code on the back end. And so to do this in Streamlit, you would typically have to write out a lot of different, create a lot of different widgets and create a lot of functionality in your Streamlit application to handle that data to manipulate the pandas data frame. Streamlit pandas handles all of this for you. So let's go ahead and just use a very, very basic example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the documentation here very closely 
And as you can tell, we need to do two steps in the documentation. We need to first create all of the widgets, and then next we have to actually uh, filter out the results from those widgets. So let's go ahead and follow this very closely. We're gonna say all widgets, we're gonna set that equal to sp.createWidgets, which is a function in the Streamlit Pandas library. Now this function is going to expect a couple different parameters. It needs the actual, the actual data frame that it's supposed to manipulate, or it's supposed to actually create the widgets from. So in our case, we're just gonna use df for right now, and then we need to filter out the data based on those widgets. So we can use sp.filterdf, this is a function from the Streamlit Pandas library, that will take in all the inputs from the widgets and the data frame, and it will automatically create a resulting data frame that you could write as simple as this. And then if we run this exact same code, we'll notice a couple things have changed automatically. With just two lines of Python, we now have an entire application that has all these different features on the side, and we have a new data frame down here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for this video so we can kind of see everything in one screen. And so what I can do is I can use these widgets to adjust, for example, age. I wanna grab everyone between the ages of, let's just say 57 and 68 or so, and I can do that. And we see the, the actual data frame being manipulated down here. Likewise, I can pass survived as just one. Now I've grabbed everyone who's survived. And let's say I only wanna grab individuals who were P class two or above. I've done that as well. Now, at this point, we can see we've limited our data frame instantaneously. A user can take in, or we can take in inputs from a user and with just two lines of Python code be able to produce this data frame. And if I didn't wanna display the original one, I can just leave it off like this and only display the result data frame just fine. So what can we do beyond this? Well, there's a couple limitations if we take this approach. The first one being, let's go ahead and reset everything here. The first major limitation of this is that we don't actually have any information, or the ability to, to make better choices about our widgets. For example, sex here is a text input. So Streamlit Pandas automatically looks at text or string columns in your Pandas data frame and will automatically create a text input. For the sex though, this doesn't really make sense because in this case, the data set only has male or female in the sex column. Now I could write out male and I could limit this all out to just male individuals, but one of the problems with this approach is if I were to do this, then I'd have to write out male and female each time. And this doesn't also make sense because female will work fine, but male will not. And the reason for this is because male occurs, this is doing a simple string contains in, in pandas, male occurs within female. So it doesn't really make sense to, to be this specific or to, to have a text input for this. Instead, if you're familiar with Streamlit, it makes a lot more sense to actually have the gender category represented as a select or multi-select. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do. Well, we can create a dictionary and I call this create data in the, in the library. And this dictionary will have a set of keys, which will be the, the fields that you want to kind of have some custom customized features to. So in our case, I wanna have a customized feature for the sex field. Now this value should correspond to a handful of options, multi-select or select for right now, uh, or text, and this will control the type of widgets that's, that is created. So if I call this select, what I can do now is I can pass in a custom argument when I create all the widgets. I can pass in this custom data. I can refresh this, and it's automatically created this and turned it into a select feature. So now I can use select and grab either male or female, and everything works just fine. But what if I wanted to have multi-select? Well, I can change this to multi-select, refresh, and now I can do the exact same thing, but I have the ability to choose female or male as multi-select, so I can pick both or just one. So this is a way that we can actually add some extra functionality to our Streamlit widgets by just passing in a dictionary. The other thing that we can do is we can also drop columns or drop certain widgets. It doesn't make a lot of sense for passenger ID, for example, to be up here. These are just numerical inputs. Maybe I don't want to actually have this at all. Now, if I don't, I can pass in an extra keyword argument called ignore columns. And these would be columns that the uh, Streamlit uh, Pandas library will just simply ignore. They won't populate as widgets. 
So in this case, I want to ignore passenger ID and I can rerun this and we get an error. Ignore columns, it helps again if you spell things correctly, should be plural here. And we see that passenger ID has dropped completely off. Now, if I were to make a mistake, a typo, I'm gonna get an error. So in this case, I'm gonna get an error that says key error passenger ID not found on access. This means that this ID, this, this value, is not appearing in your pandas data frame in the columns. And that means that you probably have a typo and you should go back and double check your pandas data frame. If we rerun this though and we correct it, everything now works fine. We've ignored passenger ID, etc. One of the things we can also do is we can use these text inputs. So for example, if I wanted to find all reverends on the Titanic that, uh, that fall into this other parameters, we can actually do that. So we can see that we've got, in this case, what, six uh, reverends on the Titanic. And I wanna point out one other thing that I've done. I've used slash period here. This is because this is using pandas string contains, which by default will take in some regex patterns as well. So you can leverage more complex queries for your users. If I were to just use a period here, I'm gonna have the same results, but what I'm not seeing is that the period in regex stands for any character. So it would just look for any instance of REV followed by any character. In our case, it's actually fine and it works, but if we were to do something a little bit different, we would actually have other results populating. So that's Streamlit Pandas in a nutshell. I've been working on this for a little while. I'm very happy to kind of share it with the community. The idea behind this was I was repeating a lot of code in a lot of different projects between uh, the institutions that I work at and some of the pro digital humanities projects I'm attached to. And so this is a way to actually repeat a lot of the code I was using in a much quicker way so you can get a Streamlit Pandas data frame application up and running within just minutes instead of hours or days. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you've liked it. Play around with the library. Um, let me know if you're running into bugs or issues and submit those on GitHub or leave a comment down here. I'd love to hear feedback. I've already gotten some great comments about working with larger data frames and maybe having a submit button so that you don't have to live manipulate and filter out a data frame every single time. That's a great option as well. But for right now, this is gonna be where the library stands and then I'll make an update over the next few weeks or so to kind of account for some of the issues that do surface as I expect they will. As always, thank you so much to all the Patreon and YouTube members on this channel. You help keep this channel alive. Uh, everything that you donate to this channel goes right back into it. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do feel free to support it via either Patreon or YouTube members. Thank you so much.